What's going on, everybody? It's your Urban Farmer. Let's get right into it. First off, let me apologize for my voice. I do have a little bit of a cold, but we're going to whip it and get right back into the swing of things. I'd also like to acknowledge all of the subscribers that have stuck with me over the years. It's been a real blessing interacting with you, including all of my subscribers that are international from the United Kingdom, Canada, Germany, Belgium, Australia, the Netherlands, Austria, and Norway, and so many other countries. How cool is it to know that no-till cannabis is uh, something that people all over the world are interested in, and I'm sure that the technique is also used for farming food as well. Anyways, here we are looking at the cover crop. This is just some wheat grass that we have growing. There's a bean plant in there as well. Each one of these plants has a specific purpose and does something different. So for example, the bean plant there fixes nitrogen from the atmosphere back to the soil. And it also is going to let you know if you have a pest problem. When farming cannabis, I really like to stick to perennial cover crops with the mycorrhizal association. That means that the mycorrhizal fungi are going to attach themselves to the roots and interact with the plant and flourish in the pot, which is something that's beneficial to cannabis. Here we are looking at the Alien Rift by Ocean Grown Seeds. I get a lot of questions concerning the leaf curl on the Alien Rift. It is a genetic trait and these plants are perfectly healthy. But if you didn't know that it was a genetic trait, you might think it was heat stress or light stress or something like that. Here's an example of some real stress and some careless efforts on my part in the garden. I mixed up an IPM solution of about 6 drops of lavender oil per gallon, which is way too much. Probably only about 2 or 3 drops is necessary. But lesson learned, take less bong hits before you go work in the garden. I get a lot of questions about what these yellow things on my pot are. They're plant yo-yos, essentially it's just fishing line on a spool. And when the plants get heavy with buds, I can hang those from the lights and support them so they don't snap. The runt, which is probably going to get culled out, is just not getting with the program, so the time is winding down for that one. <laughs> As you can see, I did defoliate a little bit. The plants need airflow through the canopy, and they can grow so bushy that it can inhibit the airflow, and you can risk getting pest pathogens, molds, things of this nature. So what I did was just take out the bottom part, and I'll go over this a little bit more. These are some branches that can be super cropped, and this is something that we'll also go uh, take a look at later on in the video. But as you can see, the middle of the bed is thick with grass and cover crop. Uh, the grass is really kind of getting in the way, and that's what I use as green manure for the bed. So I don't chop any of the crimson clover you see there on the left. Those are the red blossoms or the bean plant. I let those totally go, and the green mulch here from the grass is just going to be that. It's just going to sit in the pot and re-amend the soil full of all those nutrients. All of the little tiny bugs and worms in the pot are going to break all that down and eventually it's going to become plant available again. So here's the plant that is just a little bit taller in the bed. I'm going to go ahead and super crop that. Uh, the point being to achieve a level canopy. So what you want to do is just bend those branches down to the appropriate height. Make sure you pick a spot on the branch that's not too woody or fleshy. And just massage it and work it and eventually it'll give in and you can bend it right down and the branch will bounce right back and you'll have more of a level uniform canopy so that's great for the budding stage when you have all those bud sites. You want even light distribution and this is a, a way to set you up for that. I did not touch the very top apical Mary stem because I'm going to take that as a clone. Hopefully I'll be taking clones very soon uh, all 11 of these plants. Lights are working great, can't say enough about these LEDs. Shout out to Chill LED and Grow Mouse. Also, big shout out to DJ Basic for making all the beats to these songs. Wow, you have a lot of talent and I really appreciate your work. You can see I have the veg tent set up there trying to get organized, getting ready for a vegetative situation as we discussed in the last video. But here we are at the Frank tank. I fed Frank pretty heavily the last uh, week and we're just going to take a look in here and see what he's doing. You can see I have the partition there that Frank uh, will be able to migrate through once I start filling up the other side. But here is the Frank tank. Frank's going wild in there. I did happen to notice that there is a lot of leaf mold in there and not a whole lot of food. So I think I may have actually underfed him on the kitchen scrap side of things. I like to pair my kitchen scraps with the carbon leaf mold. So I'm just going to take some of the cannabis leaves that I used from the defoliation and we're just going to lay it in there and balance out the green with the brown and make sure our composting process is right and Frank is happy. That's going to wrap it up for this week's episode. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Drop a comment if you have any questions or if you just want to say hello and make sure to subscribe and share the video if you think some other people would benefit from this information. Don't drink and drive, smoke and fly. Happy farming everybody.